Hello and welcome to the pre-race press conference for the 2023 Hankook Rome E-Prix. Joining us on the stage are our team representatives, James Rossiter from Maserati MSG Racing, Tommaso Volpe from Nissan Formula E team, and Florian Modlinger from the Tag Heuer Porsche Formula E team. Welcome, gents. I'm going to start with you, James, in the middle. So, talking about Max, he's had some strong form over the last few races, quietly climbing up the standings. Do you think that this can continue in the time left we have of the season, secure himself a further spot, maybe even pushing for the top spots? Yes, certainly. I mean, he, he's been progressing all season. He's shown great speed all throughout the season. The one lap pace was always there. The race pace was okay, um, but there were too many mistakes. We slowly ironed out those mistakes, and for sure we have an aggressive approach to the, the rest of the season, to these final four races. Uh, and I think that you know, we're going to try our best to capitalize on that this weekend in Rome. The general consensus among teams and drivers is that this is a really fun circuit to drive. It's great, it, it, it does what Formula E does best. Although, in the past, your two drivers, albeit with different teams, have struggled to get into the points here. Does that change the approach now, especially considering we have a new car, a Gen 3 car around here to contend with? I think with everything new this year, that you can really sort of throw a bit of the form book out of the window from, from the Gen 2 era. I think that the circuit is a massive challenge. We're going to see a big divide between teams, drivers, this weekend. It's definitely a driver's circuit. You've got incredible bumps, super high speed, difficult corners, huge amounts of commitment required, and to have the consistency there to build up over the course of uh, this afternoon and then tomorrow morning is going to be the key. That build-up process is going to be the key to a strong result on, on Saturday in the race. So racing in Rome and Italy surely must be hugely special for you and the team. I'm, I'm curious to know what the excitement and passion around has been around specifically racing in Rome on these ancient streets for such a legacy brand, obviously, like Maserati. It's incredible for Maserati to be able to race on the, the streets of Rome. An amazing opportunity. It's uh, something that everyone is so excited about. I know that all the, the people at Maserati are incredibly excited. And we've had an amazing reception from, from the Italian people, from the fan base here. There's a huge following of Maserati, and hopefully we can put on a great show for them over the course of the weekend. We're certainly excited to see how it pans out. Um, Tommaso, moving over to you. Now, between your two drivers, there seem to be signs of really good race speed and performance, but then again, the form carrying over from race to race isn't necessarily hitting the same level of consistency. Do you think now, with two double headers to go, there's room to show more consistent performance? Well, I hope so. Uh, well, definitely, yes, we have speed, especially in quali. We miss some race pace, and I think more than race pace, we, are, uh, we have some uh, improvement areas on the strategy and the energy management, definitely. So uh, we think we are putting things together, so let's hope that Rome and London we show a more consistent, consistent performance. So between Norman and Sasha, um, and how you as a team approach a double header, does the team strategy change at all, trying to get the best result for a specific driver, or is it more of a full team effort across the board? Well, uh, considering where we are in the championship and where the drivers are in the championship, there is no reason for us to prioritize neither of them. So in reality, it's an effort to, to get as many points as possible as a team. Just to follow up on, on the subject of strategy and how you approach a race, does it change with the different race lengths you're contending with this weekend? Uh, yes, slightly. Uh, we have also some updates in the car that obviously have an impact on the way you approach the race. And uh, so, yes, we, we, we are changing a little bit. So now while we're towards this, the edge of the season, the end of the season, there's already discussions about several driver movements already taking uh, this year and this week, we just be, to begin with. How pleased have you been with your driver selection this season uh, in what is both their first full-time season in Formula E? Yeah, uh, we took a very daring step changing both drivers the moment we bought the team and we start changing the organization. So for us, this season was definitely a trans transaction season. And uh, uh, we, uh, with hindsight, we, I, I still think we did, a, we did the, right, we had the right choice and the right combination of profiles, different profiles, and it, it worked quite well. Uh, of course, you don't have, because we are at the beginning, you don't have to see only the points. There are a lot of things we take in consideration behind the scene in terms of uh, helping the team to grow, helping the organization, the development, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we are quite pleased. 
uh, at the same time, we are in a moment where uh, we are taking decisions for the long term of, of the team journey in Generation 3. So let's see. Um, now, Florian, moving on to you. At the start of this season, the prediction kind of amongst the paddock was you kind of had a head start in performance. You came off the bat really well, certainly understanding the Gen 3 package. Um, given the recent race results, do you think you'll be able to recover in enough time to get Pascal onto the top of the podium? Yeah, when you see now, we have three quarters of the season done. One quarter is still to go for races. And uh, when you look back, Pascal dropped once already back uh, from the lead. Uh, we retook it again, and there are enough points on the table. We showed our pace, what we have, uh, I think, in nearly all races. And also when you look in Portland, uh, Antonio was leading the race. He was on the podium. We have the pace. And we will fight for a good result to close the gap and then to try to take the lead again, yeah? As we've seen a lot in both past and current season, you don't always need to be winning in Formula E to end up on the top of the step of the podium towards the end of the season. For the strategy going into now these final few races, will it be about targeting glory or is it just about chipping away at the points like we've seen so far? Yeah, there you need to consider we are fighting for both championships, for the, uh, for the team championship, for the driver championship, and clearly also for wins and podiums. Um, but you need to consider where your competition is. And there are some other guys in the grid who can take more risk, and we need to have a proper risk assessment and management, how much risk we can take for each spot. And that's our job now uh, to manage that. Porsche and Andretti as the customer team, it's been head-to-head -head pretty much all season. You know, we've had some epic battles between Pascal and Jake. Given the cars run the same powertrain, Will that rivalry now only get bigger and, f and more fierce as we head into you know, the last two double headers of the season? Yeah, there you have to say um, it's a combined work together. We had a good cooperation from the beginning of the season. The achievement what we had together is our car won five races, um, four on our team, one on the Andretti side. And clear, we have now the competition. We are fighting both for the driver title. Our team, in addition, is also fighting for the team's title. This means the approaches of the two teams is maybe a bit different, but there's the competition, the sporting competition, and there we try to push each other to another level, and this will make us together stronger. You've all been very efficient with your answers, and you're way ahead of time, so I'm going to throw another couple of questions at you. Um, I was looking at stats for this race, and Pascal has the... The, the best stat when it comes to average points scored across double headers this season. Is that something that the team look at going into a race? Ah, what we look at, we look in general, um, does the driver like the track? Where we have to improve? Are there any weaknesses we, we, we can uh, tackle? Where's the potential? And um, clear, we have the statistics. But also now with the new car, with the Gen 3 car, you need to check each track carefully with the track characteristics, where which uh, pack a package can be strong. And especially for Rome, when you see Rome now, Rome in the past was in April. When we look back last year, we had a lot colder conditions. Complete different story now. When you go outside, you have hot conditions, ambient conditions a lot warmer, uh, different challenges. And as James already said, the Gen 3 car is so quick here, the challenge for the driver with this track, with these high-speed corners, which were in the Gen 2 nearly straight, but now it's getting a challenge. And we will have here some spectacular racing, and I'm looking forward to that. Good to hear it. Um, James, just to talk, touch upon the rookie session. Um, Felipe Dragovic jumping back in the car. He topped the session in the last rookie test in Berlin. Expecting similar things from him today? I think the, there's a different approach for us this weekend. I mean. When, you know, he showed me very clearly, and us, all of us in the team, his one-lap pace. Uh, and it's more about how we can use the time on a real Formula E track to develop him in the best way possible. So we're going with the approach of trying to get him some energy save laps, trying to figure some things out like that, give him real-life Formula E experience, which is, uh, you know, uh, it's extremely difficult to come by these days. So giving him that experience, and then hopefully at the end of the session, you know, we can, uh, we can see what he's capable of. And just one question to you, Tommaso, before we open it up to the floor. Um, we've talked about the conditions being drastically different to what we're used to racing in Rome, where it's been cold. What sort of additional challenges will that put on the driver and the car, more specifically? 
Well, definitely it's very hot. <laughs> we are all suffering of it, and for the drivers it's even worse. I would say, obviously, the grip is going to be an element in the uh, tires management. It's, gonna be, it's always crucial, but I would say with this heat, it's going to be something to, to, to manage differently from previous Rome events, for sure. Is there a concern about uh, battery overheating at all? This season, we didn't have, we, we thought we could have it, but uh, to be honest, uh, we didn't have it much.